Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. Today I'm going to take a quick look at the Distress It All. So it's by Zata and it's pronounced, well, I pronounce it Distress It All, but it's actually Distress It All. It just sounds a bit strange to say that. And this is the version 2.0 and I have been desperately waiting for this to be released in an Australian version for quite some time now. And finally, it has come out. So this is the little box it comes in. It's a very neat little unit. You can see it's pink, which is definitely not hurting at all. <laughs> um, this one is the Australian version. So it comes with the adapter, which is um, a 240 volt, um, and it's all included. It says here on the box that it's for paper, cardstock, cardboard, chipboard, wood, leather, and whatever else you can kind of fit through it. So I'm going to just give this a little tiny test tonight just to make sure that it's working and basically so that you can see what's to expect if you're buying one of these for yourself. Now I bought mine from Scrapbooking Boutique in Australia and I'll put the link for any Aussies that are looking for one underneath this clip. So when you take it out of its little box, it's very neatly packaged. Okay, warranty notices. So this is just a little notice here about things you can't put through it. Uh, it says it will not work with fabrics because the fabric threads can end up around the little mechanism and it will damage the unit and this also voids its warranty. You can't use it around anything that's wet or damp and you can't use glass, metal, plastic or acrylic in here. Any of these things will void the warranty. So that's good to know. It's got a very neat little instruction book. Well, you know how I thought this was an instruction booklet? It's not. It's a little product advertisement for all of the different uh, Zutter tools. So, it doesn't really come with instructions. Luckily, there's not much to it. I'm assuming, I could be wrong, and I won't try it on my project just yet, that you insert paper, hold it on, and move it across the tool. Let's give it a go. Now, this is what it's calling the adapter. So even though the um, output has been altered for Australia, it still has those little plugs that aren't suitable for Australian PowerPoints. Luckily, I have a little converter, one of those travel packs, and I'll be plugging this into that. The unit itself is quite light. It has something in there. Ooh. Look, okay, this must be to catch all of the um, little bits of paper that will be ripped off your project. It's got some little non-slip feet, although I see this one has moved. <laughs> Happens sometimes, doesn't it? Now, what I'm talking about when I say travel adapter is one of these neat little gadgets. Okay, so this one just goes in like this. Some of them are a little bit tight to get out. And then this plug end goes in our Aussie um, PowerPoints. I've got it plugged in. I notice you've actually got to hold down the button to keep this on. Fair enough. It seems that the edge that you hold facing this section of the tool ends up a little more distressed. Seems that the side facing away from the label ends up a little bit more distressed than the side facing the label. So let's give that another go. Ooh, it does kick a little on the end there. Let's try it on this piece of purple cardstock. Okay, that seems to have worked a little better. Yep, it's got a real kick if you drag it back this way. It really kicks that edge out there. There doesn't seem to be much difference between the black cardstock I was using originally and this purple stuff. What this machine seems to do is split the paper down the middle. I was kind of expecting more of a, I suppose, a rotating, like little bites taken out of the paper. But what it's sort of done is, is split the paper. You can see it down the middle there. So when you kind of flatten the paper back down, it doesn't really, I suppose it's at least distressed, but 
it's still a bit flatter than I was expecting. So I was kind of expecting chunks and little piece to, pieces taken out so it's looking really grungy. So maybe I just need to run it through harder or a couple more times, press down a bit harder, give this another whirl. All right, so you really need to watch the kick on the corner of the paper. That really seems to do a bit of damage. Now, the harder you press, the more distressed this does get. So what they probably need to mention is that uh, pressure on the cardstock really does make a difference here. So as you can see, I've pressed down a little bit harder in areas now. And so I'm getting more of that grungy look that I was expecting. Now I'm going to see how much papers come out of this. I'm going to detach it from the power first because there is a blade in here. I don't really want to uh, hurt myself at all. Oh, right, okay, so that just makes paper fluff. Really not much collecting in there at all. So that's nice and simple. Right, now it does say that you can use this on multiple pieces of paper at once. I'm going to go give that a try. On here, I've got one piece of purple cardstock. Yep, you can see I've got stamps on the front and the back there. And then I've adhered a piece of ruched cardstock over the top. Let me go try this out. It's not actually collecting all of the paper fluff in the little compartment here. It's actually making a fair bit of mess. Um, it's not really an issue. It's just a little bit messy. So you definitely get a different result depending on how you're holding your paper. So if you hold it tilted like this, so I'm pressing it um, down at the, sort of I'm holding it tilted towards the label here. It then does take little chunks out of the paper kind of like I was expecting. If you hold it straight up and down, you get a much more flat result. So I quite like the effect when you hold it on an angle. You get some of this buckling. I'm just gonna pull a few pieces off here. And you get a much more interesting edge, or what I think is a much more interesting edge. So I've sort of held it slightly tilted to get this really nice, sort of chunky, grungy, distressed edge. When you hold it more straight on, it splits the cardstock. If you hold it and press it down, you get little chunks taken out. So this really this really does require you to um, not hold the cardstock straight up and down, but be a little bit creative and a little bit uh, willing, I suppose, to have a play around with how you're holding it. So that gives a much more interesting edge. That's a lot more like what I was expecting. So if you'd like something that's really distressed, um, with little bits hanging off and little bits poking out, then you really need to move your cardstock around. So hold it at an angle, straight up and down, kind of tap it as you're going rather than just drag smoothly. That smooth drag seems to split the cardstock. So tap it, hold it at an angle, um, turn it around because you'll find that one side is much more distressed than the other um, until you get what you're after. So um, yeah, this does a very cool little distressing technique. Um, it seems to all be in the way that you're holding the card. If I had to write the instructions for this myself, they would say, firstly, hold down the button to power the blade, then insert the card into the slot, drag over the blade to distress. Varied pressure would give you more varied results. Flip the card for even distressing on both sides. You can hold it at an angle for more variation. And of course, empty the paper catcher, probably after 10 uses. The positives of this unit, it's really nice and light. Um, you heard how loud it was. It's not extremely loud. It's not something that you can't use um, when your other family members are in the house. Um, it's very, very neat. And uh, it's got a nice little paper catcher underneath and it does seem to do a really nice job of distressing. Cons. 
the little paper catcher underneath really doesn't catch all of the paper scraps. Um, I suppose that's a small issue. It just makes the unit a little bit messy. You do need to move your cardstock around. It doesn't give consistent results on both sides of the, the little cutter. As long as you know that you can easily compensate for that though. Uh, it does not come natively with a plug suitable for Australian PowerPoints. So you will need to buy the adapter. So even though it says it's compatible with Australian PowerPoints, you do still need the adapter. Because as you saw before, it's got that funny little two-pronged power plug. I hope you find that quick look at the Australian version of the Distress at All uh, helpful and that uh, gives you a heads up about some of the little things you might need to know when you purchase your own. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.